my name is Amanda Holcomb. And I'm Brooke McGinnis. And welcome to Brunch and Learn. Today we have a very special guest, Kevin Irwin, and she is the artist of one of the pieces in our collection that we love named Wiregrass Dragon. And we've given the dragon the name Irwin after the artist, and she is able to join us from her studio. So welcome, Kevin. Welcome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, so I think we'll just start with um, a couple questions. I think the biggest one that we really want to know is where does the inspiration for your dragons come from? Um, well, it started a long time ago when I was young and I saw a dragon that was just so attractive to me. And I didn't study them, I didn't know anything about them. I just thought, that they were funny because they flew, they breathed fire, but they were huge and none of it made sense to me, but I just loved them and started making some. And then I read a little bit about them, that they're supposedly a mythological creature, but they, every culture in the world has one, but they all have different characteristics. Some are good luck, some are bad luck. Some, and I, so I think the inspiration was kind of like dragons are a way of thinking. Life is what you make it. So if a dragon can be anything, that kind of became my just spirit of, um, of having the power to look at life any way I wanted to look at it and dream anything I wanted to dream. And I loved the whole concept of the dragons flying and everything they did. So it was sort of like anything's possible. And I've held that with me for the rest of my life, this whole idea that life is very open-ended and you can really make a great life if you want. Oh, I love that. And I think you really get a sense of that when you look at your works. Um, I think one of my favorite things about them is they're just, when I look on them, I'm, they're so whimsical and I feel like I'm full of wonder and um, they just fill me with joy. You know, <laughs> like I see your works, I'm like, this is so joyful and just um, kind of celebratory. So I get that. Do you have a favorite piece that you've created? Um, well, what I, first what I'd like to say about that is that my dragons are sweet you don't want to just totally turn your back and let them loose in the house because you might find some charring on some of the furniture but they're sweet and they're funny and um a little mischievous but you brought up the word joy and that is what my work is all about and what i'm all about from the very beginning a million years ago i laughed in the studio and i just wanted to create joyous, fun, happy, beautiful, colorful work. And I just did it all for me. And then other people were responding and it's just, and I realized I had that to offer. I had that to offer the world. And that just became, um, I just wanted to share it. And that was the way I could share it. And I could share it on a deeper level. And, you know, the, all the animals I do and all the stuff they're getting into and everything that makes me laugh, I'm able to share that and the beauty I see in nature. So my life's work has been sharing joy. I'm happy. It makes me laugh. I'm excited about it. So that's, that's what I'm sharing to this moment. We definitely get that. I love it. <laughs> You communicated that well. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Well, and, you know, and like we've said that the dragon does really bring in some joy. Any moment anybody walks right into the museum, it is uh, one of, if not the first things that uh, young artists uh, see. And on that, do you have any advice for young artists? Uh, any, any words of inspiration or motivation that you might share with them? Well, what I would say is always just work from your heart and work from your own life and your own imagination and don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Tell your own story and whatever feelings you have from your work, if you like it, 
then redo it. If you love it, leave it alone, but don't take anybody else's opinion, really. I'm not saying don't take an instruction about technique or anything like that, but I'm just saying always have your work be yours. And even if you're older and you're getting more serious, don't worry about trends or what's popular. I mean, look at my work. It's all about whimsy and joy and silliness. And I got to have a museum show. So <laughs> just always be true to yourself. And if you do that, you'll work in such joy and you'll be inspired your whole life. So don't really worry about any of that. Just truly work from your own heart and um, enjoy every minute of it. I love that. <laughs> um, so I'm always interested in who um, artists are following, like who are some of their favorite artists of the moment that they like to follow their work and enjoy their work, maybe even collect their work. So is there anyone that you think we should be looking at too that you really enjoy uh, right now? Well, an artist that I absolutely love is Jane Marshall. She's um, here in Birmingham. And she does, she does ceramics and she paints and draws and does printmaking. And I think her work is, well, put it this way. I have one of her pieces of art or two or three in every room in my house. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just absolutely in love with her work. Well, wonderful. Um, now, I personally am very excited to get a little bit of a behind the scenes peek of your studio. So can we get that studio tour? Yes, yes. Well, first I'll say that my studio was, um, was built in 1880. It's a Victorian building. And let me start the tour. So you'll see a lot of crumbling brick and plaster and giant windows. And that's because of the era. So this is, does that look good? Yeah. Okay, so this is my clay table. No. Um, with all my tools. So here's my tools. And because my studio is so big, I'm gonna try and do a long shot here. Um, you can see it's huge. So I have the luxury to have all these different areas that I can work in. So that area we just saw is my clay table. And then I have here, another clay table and um, I keep them both full because I'm, I'm busy I'm working all the time and then I'm gonna walk you back and then I've just got all kinds of things like here this is a big basket of all kinds of natural things rocks and sticks and things that I pick up and also from my travels that I use to texture my work and then I make um, all these different texture stamps and rollers. I mean, it's just endless. I'm just showing you all this stuff I do. And then this is um, my, let's see, I'm not doing a good job. This is my glass area. And you can see all these rods of colored glass. And I do have ceramics that's a combination of glass and clay. And then I do metal and glass jewelry. And this is, maybe you can see this a little better. So I have a torch here and all this beautiful glass that I brought back from Venice, Italy, where I studied about 25 years ago. And then, so it's got its own area. This is kind of a drawing area of things and then this is a <laughs> i think i'm not doing a good job with this <laughs> uh soldering area i can't the way i'm holding this i can't really see what you guys are seeing this is a soldering area this is if i can get her into the picture there she is yeah. girl that didn't quite make it <laughs> she blew up in the kill so to all of you that are listening and doing ceramics, this happens. So don't worry about it. Just work in the moment and have fun. I'm, I'm going to glue her back together. So this actually whole area that I'm showing you is a glass area. Then this area 
is these, this is a wall of chemicals. And this is where I make all my glazes and all my colors. And it's so much fun. I call it my laboratory. And I can't believe that I get to make color. And um, then this is the area where I put all my jewelry together. And I have all my little Barbie tools, Barbie sized hammers and everything. And then I'm gonna keep walking. These are my kills. I think I have about 10 kills. And let me back up here. So this is a giant kill that I bought to fire the dragon, at, to fire Irwin at Wiregrass. And it's so big. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I have to have this big chain with a pulley just to open it. And it took four men to load it into the kill. Then this is my glazing area. And it's always just full of fun stuff that I'm working on. And I kind of like to um, always have stuff going. So when I walk in the studio, I can choose from all kinds of work. I don't know if you can see this or not, but these are all little test tiles of a new technique that I'm designing. And then this table here is also all these wonderful test tiles that I do. And then, so anyway, this table here, I'm gonna kind of do a long shot. So this is where I do the glazing. And then this, which is so exciting, these are all the colors that I make. You can see hundreds and hundreds of colors of glaze. So I just have so much fun choosing. How am I doing for, for you to be able to see? Perfect. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, okay yeah, good. I might be drooling a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we're just slack jawed like kids right now. We're like, oh. <laughs> I know, I, I know. I mean, look at that. I know all those colors to play with. Then I have these carts and they're full of, let's see if I'm getting it there, full of work. And the way I work is I might do a piece and then 10 years later glaze it. It's so, uh, you know, it's so much fun. And I might have like a drawing of cats and birds at Christmas time, and then I'll put a whole nother drawing on top of it. So um, I'm, it's, uh, what's so wonderful about art and of any medium is that you can, um, it, it's timeless. You can work on something and then 40 years later, open up your sketchbook and go, oh, I like that idea and do it. So I love that freedom. And then here's more kills because the studio is so giant. And then I have this wonderful room and it's kind of my showroom where people can come and see, see work. And here's some different pieces that are in there. Because my studio is so big, I can do this. And um, then I have shelves and here's some of my paint. I also paint. And here's some of my paintings. And then I have shelves here with etchings and paintings and some pottery. And then I have another showroom with larger pieces and paintings and almost did not leave the, this space when i visited your studio i think i just i camped out in here for a while <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's yeah it's fun i noticed the christmas lights are still up in here <laughs> <laughs> and this was another like super fun piece that actually i did for you guys and we ended up i know it was there which i still have which i love ollie so this is uh, just a wonderful, amazing um, studio to work in. And then I also have this beautiful seating area here with uh, books. And I have these French doors I can open to the street so I can meet with people here or just sit in here 
and draw or read or take a nap. So this is where I get to work. Yeah, hardly any room to move in, right? Very small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so cramped. So cramped. <laughs> How can you stand it, right? <laughs> exactly. I know. It's tough. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm always here. I mean, I would be too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. I know. So, um, would you like me to show how I do dragon scales? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I love detail. And I spend a lot of time on all my pieces. Just because it's so fun. And so, <laughs> a dragon scale is just a tiny ball of clay squished be between my fingers and applied and that is one dragon scale and then you do it again and then you do it again and then you do it about a thousand more times. <laughs> and, have an arm. <laughs> so, and so every scale has my fingerprint on it. So that just kind of shows you the detail in my work. And I, um, I can actually show you that. There you go. Uh, so it's a pond. And there's an alligator in the pond, and there's a cat playing with the alligator's tail. But I just wanted to see, you to see all the detail, is why I brought you over. All my work is just highly, highly detailed. Let's see, there's one over here. That's these dogs. Let's see if I can get a view of it. These dogs, there's the tree. The tree is full of little squirrels that are looking down. And the dogs have destroyed this yard. They've dug holes, they've pulled up all the flowers, they turned over all the flower pots, and the three <laughs> of them are sitting in the middle of the yard that they destroyed. And they're so excited. So I love doing these narrative action pieces where animals are really doing bad things. <laughs> now, did I read somewhere that that, like, that piece is inspired by your own life with squirrel, squirrels terrorizing your home and you have animals that are hyperactive and all of that? Yes. Everything that I do, I'm going to rinse off my hands here. Everything that I do is inspired by my own life. Yeah. People say, where do you get your ideas? Just my life every day. I'll give you another example. This is a piece which I love. So this is called the Professional Shredder. And I love this piece so much. And this cat is so pleased with itself. It's licking its paw. And it's so funny. And people say, that is hysterical. Where did you come up with that idea? So now I'm just going to show you the chair in my studio. <laughs> so. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so there it is. <laughs> There's my recliner. And I think the front of it goes all the way to the wood. Are you guys seeing oh. <laughs> I've had a chair like that before, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of sums up the where do your ideas come from. So uh, if, if someone wanted to purchase one of your pieces, um, obviously, you know, you've got your, um, you know, studio in Birmingham. Do you have any online presence since we're all sitting at home and spending money? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Impulse buying, right? Like, where can we, where can we get some of your work? Um, well, I do have a website, and which I guess I should update. <laughs> I don't think I've looked at it in a couple of years. But I do have a website, and you can call me personally, and I can 
send photos of what I have available. It's always changing. I have of every price range from $25 up. And you just check out my website and I'll, I'll go ahead and put some new pieces on there. <laughs> Excellent, yeah. <laughs> well, is there anything else, Kevin, that you wanna share with uh, either us here at the museum or our audience, anything about yourself, your artwork? I guess I'll say it's never too late to have a happy childhood and it's never too late to live your dreams. It's never too late to start. Don't ever feel that you can't jump in at any moment in your life, whether you're five years old, 50 years old, 70 years old, and, um, And just always love it and be open-minded. And what I always say every day is that I'm going to the studio to play. Thank you so much for joining us for this Brunch and Learn. We're very grateful to be able to share you and your studio and your artwork with everyone. And of course, we always love having the dragon, Irwin, on site. I know that I get to love it and look at it every single day at work. So I'm very grateful for that. Well, thank you so much for joining me at the studio and, um, and giving me the opportunity to share my work. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. This has been wonderful. <laughs>